Okay, uh, first of all, uh, welcome uh, to everybody and good afternoon. My name is Gaia Toschi, I'm uh, the director of Open Art Week, and which is a project that was born, it was launched in 2018 to connect internationally all over the world, uh, independent artists, organizations, and art spaces. We are here today to talk about fashion, as you know, <laughs> and more precisely about the future of fashion, according to uh, young Italian and Tunisian designers under 30, uh, who are also our guests today. And uh, we were lucky enough to select them through a jury to participate and take part to uh, Fashion Breaks, which is a fashion video exhibition that Open Art Week launched um, at the beginning of November, uh, which is on view on our website until the 3rd of December. Uh, we all know that uh, COVID, following the first uh, wave of COVID, uh, there was a general shutdown of creativity and economic production in fashion, uh, which has basically uh, triggered so many challenges in the fashion industries. We have seen damage, but we have seen also new opportunities coming up. And today we are going to discuss about this with you. We would really like to hear from the young guest designers here today with us how uh, this should happen, how this change should happen, and uh, if pandemics is really changing the way or could change the way collections are created, marketed, and produced by the young generations. We would like to hear from you your view, your opinion, your challenges, but also to really listen and probably learn from you what you think is going to be the way, the way forward. So what are your proposals <laughs> to change fashion for a better future? Uh, the program of this talk is articulated in four main themes or sections of 15 minutes each. Each session will be moder moderated by an expert. who will ask you an open question and uh, we lead the conversation with you. The main topic we are going to touch on are the most relevant part of the whole dis discussion about fashion today, which is digital fashion <laughs> and uh, how to communicate fashion today, uh, sustainability, what does it mean today, and which are the new challenges and opportunities to work on fashion. Um, having said that, I would like to start introducing you one by one. Uh, and I thank you so much for being uh, with us today. I will start from the youngest uh, guests for once, so the designers. Uh, welcome to Noha Ezin, who is a Tunisian fashion designer and founder of the brand Hidden Rebels Club. Hi, Noah. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Francesca Mariaciani, we're really glad you made it. Uh, who is a fashion designer, today working as fashion designer assistant at Alberta Ferretti. Welcome thank <laughs> and thank you for being with us. Luca Cioffi, uh, fashion designer based in Rome yeah. and founder of DOM, right? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not of DOM. I am, uh, I'm not the founder of DOM, it's uh, oh. another person. No. Sorry about that. Sorry about the mistake. No problem. And uh, Wasim Lahmar, Tunisian hey. fashion designer based now in Paris. I think you're calling yes. us from Paris and founder of the label uh, W The Brand. The Brand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank Hello. you. Welcome to everybody. I would just take some more time to introduce to all of you uh, our guest speakers. Uh, we we'll start from Fabiana De Luca, Head of Economic Department of the Italian Embassy in Tunis. Hi, Fabiana. Hi, Gaia. I hope Hi. you can hear me. Yes, we can. Hi, thank you for joining. Thank Joanna Ben Suisi, our director and photographer, and the first Tunisian contributor of Vogue Arabia. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Ciao. Buccio Basio, coordinator of Saint Laurent Couture Institute in Paris. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. 
and Denise Lustri, General Secretary of the Tunisian Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Hi, Denise. Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I would like also to thank Maria Vittoria Longhi, the Director of the Italian uh, Institute of Culture in Tunis, who is with us today. Thank you for joining. Hello, Maria Vittoria. I think, yeah. Um, Maria Vittoria, along with the Culture, Italian Culture and Institute, has supported this initiative and Open Art Week 2020. A special thanks also to all our partners, the Italian Embassy of Tunis, DMB Consulting, the Tunisian Italian Chamber of Commerce and Industries, and Olympias Group. Okay, now having said this, I would just uh, leave the floor to the first uh, speaker with Fabiana De Luca and uh, who will open the first session that is devoted to digital fashion. So thank you Gaia, thank you for the invitation. It's a great opportunity to be here with you today and uh, I just want to, to make a focus, a brief focus on digital fashion. As you rightly said, uh, COVID-19 changed our lives in a very, in a very deep way. It was a challenge for, for everyone, but maybe it was, and it is, it's still going, an opportunity for, um, for everyone, for us, and for all, um, all of the economic sectors. So um, I'm convinced that fashion makes no exception. So I just want to, um, to ask to our, to our guests of today, uh, according to them, which are the, the most important opportunities and uh, possibilities which are provided by these these profound changes uh, um, made by COVID-19, which are the main opportunities provided by this this um, new kind of digital fashion, and uh, just another little reflection about that. Um, according to you, uh, these changes uh, experienced by your your sector can make, uh, uh, can transform the sector in a more democratic sector, as can, uh, as can we say. So I just want to, to hear from your voices, your, your opinion and your suggestions for digital fashion after COVID-19. Go ahead, Francesca, you're welcome. Hi. Well, to be honest, I have uh, First of all, thank you for the invitation, this opportunity, and, uh, and it's really interesting and uh, I really appreciate it. And I think I've never heard of uh, social media and managers or e-commerce managers as, as I did this year. And I think uh, the reason is, uh, obviously, the distance uh, required a new professional figure. So um, I think that the need uh, is uh, to bring the emotion of shopping to another level, to something that uh, we have never mm, mm, tried before. So mm, the, the thing that changed for me is the, the role of consumer has shifted from the passive to the dominance because um, the digital, digital technologies give us the empower to the, the consumer. So uh, maybe when you talk about uh, um, the second question you ask, uh, more dem democratical, I think it is because it's uh, for everyone. We, everyone can uh, take the smartphone or the laptop and uh, give an, a look to something that uh, he have never done before. So I think absolutely it is uh, really more democratical than before. And um, this is <laughs> to um, to start from one of your reflections. So um, you you said that you have to approach in a different way the public, yeah. and to be more emotional, more present, more direct, maybe. So, um, according to you, which are the, the new strategies to put, to put in place in order to do that? It was a very, a very smart reflection, I think, so I just want to, to develop a little bit the, the matter. Yeah, I think it's not easy to think about something so new that it's not been experimented before, because um, we have uh, 
um, the opportunity to experiment um, a lot of ways. For example, the new 3D or the possibility to, um, um, I don't know how to say, uh, trying the cloth by an app. So there are digital ways, uh, digital uh, experimentation that uh, are kind of new, total new from the big, from a uh, few years. And I think this is the moment to experiment more about these ways. So, for example, um, well, few a few years ago we have to go somewhere to try a cloth. Right now we can just by click uh, see the photo of us with the coat on or the trouser on or the shoes on the glass on. It's something completely different from the beginning and of the and the, it has to be really emotional these things so every day is going to be more and more emotional i think so gaia just a little um, another little reflection um about experimenting so we have a lot of we have some representatives of uh, uh, young designers today so, and experimenting usually is connected to, the, to a young age, or maybe very often, uh, very often we can say it. So, according to our, to our designers, or to the designers who are present to, today, um, the, can, be, uh, can this pandemic be transformed in a new, um, uh, in a new opportunity, especially for, uh, for younger generations? What do you think about it? Oh, hello, everyone. I think as a young designer and a digital marketing student here in Paris, I think that the pandemic pushed us all young designer and big uh, luxurious brands to uh, like provide new and innovate more in digital to make us more visible and try to uh, to be available more like in a worldwide uh, way to to uh, present our clothing, our brands, our products in other ways more than the physical or in stores, the basic way that we are used to 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 see. So I think that the pandemic pushed like uh, people to innovate more in the digital way, like uh, making 3D stores, 3D fashion shows, 3D fashion. The young designer, young designers also had a great opportunity due to this pandemic to present their collection on the internet due to new uh, ways as like uh, Instagram filters that make us now can try even new clothes on just by putting a filter or or like Instagram shopping, Facebook shopping. I think that this all these new ways for shopping or to, for e-commerce make us uh, really more close uh, due to the internet and due to new strat marketing strategies. So, so this intervention um, makes me thinking about uh, um, a quick preview of the future se season to use uh, some, some terms uh, which are connected to fashion. Um, what do you think about the, the post-COVID-19? Which kind uh, of strategy, uh, useful in, in this time, can be, um, can be useful for the future? What do you think about it? We will overcome this kind of process, this kind of strategies, digi digital fashion, in order to come back to normal fashion, uh, normal fashion weeks, normal, uh, um, normal um, procedures, or we can exploit uh, this new this new area even in a, a new normal area after COVID-19. Uh, what do you think about it? We can make a mix of these two uh, different times, different experiences, or we are just um, we are just experimenting something now in order to uh, to be back to to the normal after COVID-19. I'm very I'm very interested about your opinion on that. I think yeah, it, even that we we have the chance to like show new creative ways to present our works and our collection. I think that there is uh, no other way to 
uh, replace the uh, the normal way like fashion shows and the, the usual way to present to uh, our works but i think like with the digital and uh, but even with digital because brands start trying digital digital way since uh, three or five years now even more but with the pandemic things start to get more fast to be that things get to to be faster because now there is no other way to replace uh, the usual way so now with the digital ways and the physical way that we ha we are used to uh, to use i think that we should like make a fusion of the both of the the experience to continue our way and uh, try to innovate even more and with the with the two the two uh, experience the digital one and the the normal one that you are used to to do so in your opinion we are we can exploit this this situation this crisis this global crisis in order to to find new new procedures new way of actions new of action new strategies even for normal times as we hope to see everyone i think yes exactly because when when the uh, the whole story starts the pandemic story starts no one was expecting expecting expected uh, that you are going to spend the whole year with no uh, with no normal life so people start putting new ways and new uh, fashion shows online 3d uh, store 3d uh, fashion shows we, we saw like really amazing uh, ways to represent uh, to uh, season of uh, of uh, fashion uh, it was really uh, so fast so quick and it included too many other um, like uh, a domain domain other other domain to, to the fashion industry so we see like 3d modeling um, people and students including in the fashion industry we are seeing like marketing digital people even from uh, other industry like in included in the fashion industry i think this is this was a really good way and we, we me as a fashion uh, as i just started my my label i see this this whole uh, st digital strategy allowed me to be seen more uh, as usual gr uh, glass uh, due to the uh, digital this digital experience so gaia if we have just uh, some more time um, i would like to ask to our guest if um, in what way in which way uh, this experience of uh, digital fashion uh, lockdown and so on changed their um, kind of creating ex experimenting and uh, inventing in a in a real way uh, in their in their job in their work, in their everyday work because i think that for um, for a designer uh, the direct experience of the world is important in order to to create to imagine to to experiment but um, when you are stuck at home who, in which way the experience of creating changes? Uh, I would invite, maybe, sorry if I step in, maybe Luca or Noha could join the conversation if you feel like it, of course. So we okay, can I can answer to the question with my vision. I'm personally, when um, talking about the fashion, uh, the digital fashion, I think that uh, digital is uh, an opportunity, is uh, also a challenge, but at the same time, I think that um, um, digital in fashion is not the immediate future. I think that uh, is uh, a long term, because I think that um, everything that we are creating, uh, um, especially for a designer when uh, creates a, a collection, uh, he has uh, to see the fabrics, to touch the fabrics, and uh, to wear a fabric, uh, wear a cloth, a dress, uh, everything uh, uh, is important, touch the product. And I am I'm not um, of the old school uh, supporter, but I think that uh, we need uh, um, still a touch of uh, we have um, to be more present uh, with uh, physically in fashion and not only digitally for example uh, i decided to, uh, to present my collection uh, um, the upcoming collection not with a show for example or the, with a presentation but i decided to present my collection with um, 
digital exhibition. I created uh, 10 different uh, installations, uh, also with, the, um, ten, with uh, the help of other artists that don't do nothing with fashion, but I decided to create the uh, Atom in uh, my garage, this installation. I created all in, um, in a digital platform and I recreated all my collection and the installation in a 3D, um, in a 3D platform. But I have to say that uh, I'm not sure that is uh, uh, the right way to present a collection. It's a sort of, um, I'm sure that uh, I'm doing the best thing for this moment, but uh, if um, we are not, um, if uh, there were not uh, um, the coronavirus, uh, I think that the installation will be more beautiful, more uh, emotionally, more, uh, how can I say, more touching. I, can, I don't know if uh, it's the exact word, but physically. And I can say that uh, staying at home is uh, an opportunity to create, but it's not uh, at the same time an opportunity to present to the world our collections especially for a designer, but the, um, we can see that in some editorials, for example, I remember an editorial uh, uh, for the, um, either the March issue of this year of Vogue Italia. I remember there was uh, um, an amazing work uh, and of um, the stylist Susan Kuller. He presented, uh, she presented um, a chair with the four different strands uh, and um, the leg of the chair, uh, the chair were, um, were uh, two pair of boots. That uh, is uh, the real way to express uh, fashion also with the use of a, of a precious vision, but uh, coming, uh, verse, um, coming to a new, um, a new period, the digital period, yes, because uh, she realized all the, I can say, the, this fashion installation at home, at her home. And I can say that, yes, I can say that fashion will be a day digitally, totally digital, but um, not now. Um, I think we're running a bit out of time. Uh, I don't know how I would like to join something. I would just uh, go to the next uh, section. Yeah, I would, uh, just, I would just like to ask a question, please. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> I've been raising my hand. I don't know. If <laughs> no, don't know. worry, it's okay. <laughs> and I think Francesca is raising her hand now, but just, just keep an eye out for hands, right? <laughs> Sorry. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. If um, so this was for me, I didn't understand. I'm sorry. No, yeah. no. I was just saying, like some some of us are raising hands to to speak, oh, and, then, yeah. and then we go like this. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, yeah. And one of, of one of those persons were Francesca, right? So Francesca, sorry if I missed you. <laughs> <Your hand. laughs> no, don't worry. I just want to um, answer a thing that I didn't um, thought before, but um, it it is democratically. I then, um, to the question that uh, Fabiana asked before internet is democratic. I didn't think that now as a fashion young fashion designer I have the same opportunity to make a 3D sample of my clothes uh, as, a, yeah, and as a big brand could do. I've never thought that um, being on a fashion show is really selective, but being on the internet is not. So it's really inter interesting and I've never thought before. I agree. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what, you know, like what internet did to other parts of other activities, like for the media, for example, you know, when the blogs popped in and you had all this independent other vision on, on the news and stuff like that, it's doing that to them also, which is a very good thing. Another thing to look at is that uh, it's real that the presentation is not uh, as beautiful as it could be in person, but uh, the selling uh, is moving on another direction because, for example, some brands is sending samples of the fabrics of their clothes okay, okay. with the first uh, shop, with the first uh, buy, and then uh, you can have uh, the sample to choose your shirt, to buy the t-shirt or other things. Okay, okay, okay. 
So Gaia, I think we we don't have an, an uh, other times, but uh, thank you. It was very very interesting for me to moderate this first part of the uh, of the meeting, and uh, I will stay with you for the following. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We are yeah, running uh, <laughs> towards the second uh, section. Johanna, it's all yours. We are going to talk about communicating fashion today. She's the best person to, <laughs> yeah, to just lead the conversation. <laughs> we cannot hear you, Johanna. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. Is it better? Um, so guys, before I start uh, asking questions, I'm going to tell you a little, very short story uh, about how um, Gaia asked me to be a moderator on this talk. And she, uh, she sent, you know, uh, a general idea of uh, maybe what kind of topic I should uh, talk about. And she asked me this, um, she, she gave me this sentence. Uh, it was the fashion image and communication. Why is content as important as imagery? for today's fashion. Uh, when, I heard, when I read content, I wasn't sure of what she meant exactly, but my mind when I read content went straight to digital content, to Instagram stuff. Like my dumb millennial self just thought of that. She meant, of course, content in the real sense of the word, like the, the, the actual message that's behind an image, you know? versus the actual uh, visual. Uh, so I was like, okay, my God, it's crazy how much we're directed. Um, you know, our mind is always directed through social media nowadays. And I'm not a big social media fan, but I think that tells a lot. So here's my question for you guys. Um, fashion is very visual, right? It's a very visual art. Uh, but like said Luca, it's also a very, you know, it includes all of the senses, you know, the touch, the, the sometimes even the smell and, but mostly I'd say visual. This is why it's so, working so much, I think, on the internet. Um, do you feel like uh, the inspiration you take from uh, images that you see on screens or maybe on paper, it doesn't matter. Um, they take a big part of your inspiration today. Like this is where, most of your inspiration come from or do you still look for other sources like uh, not images i don't know if my question is clear you can ask questions about the question if you want there you go should i point mm -hmm. <laughs> francesca go ahead just to break the ice i suppose <laughs> yeah well honestly it's something that i really miss in, before the pandemic outbreak, I really go out, search for vintage clothes, uh, um, real little detail on uh, clothes, uh, on garment that uh, I can see, I can feel by the screen. Anyway, uh, I think we have to adapt to try to make a new force on our mind, on our imagination, and uh, really make something new. Because uh, the thing that uh, I um, experimented by working is uh, when I see something unreal, it's really easy to draw it, uh, to style it really similar, or anyway, really um, the fascinating, the, um, the fabric is really similar. When I see on the screen, the moment I draw it is completely different. So maybe it's a new way, I don't know, but uh, I really um, feel uh, a little bit actual, anxious about uh, the missing of uh, touching and uh, researching. For me, for example, the most uh, important thing was uh, the journey, um, experiment a new culture. I love to travel and this is, something that really miss in my design and designer career. But who knows, I suppose. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very interesting because you, um, you actually um, took my question with an angle uh, 
pandemic, which is what we're supposed to talk about today, that's true. But um, what I meant was more in a general, you know, um, meaning like even without COVID, um, I, I feel like it's so easy today to just scroll and see so much stuff, so much stuff, especially if you're like, this is your life, like you're a designer, you, you, you're just so tempted to go like this and, and say, wow, 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 this is, this is incredible. Um, but in general, w without COVID, would you still, I don't, I don't know, um, do you take you, for example, um, some inspiration, I don't know, from your family, from nature, from just random things that you see or you hear or anything other than seeing images and, and saying, oh, that's a vibe, that's a mood I like. Something that I, I really touched me because it quite doesn't exist, exist on uh, social media because uh, when uh, I decided to make this choice, this designer career, um, I didn't want to have uh, um, such a brand, uh, um, how do I know how to say, um, my social on uh, Instagram or Facebook because uh, uh, I don't think I have the identity, the complex, the the really uh, real. How do not to say? I'm, I haven't experimented enough for presenting myself uh, as a brand or as a designer. So I'm now searching, working on it before I start. I decide to make. I, I know it's important. It's a vital for the. Um, for the, I don't know how to say, um, for exist in fashion, being on the social, but it's also very important to be, uh, I don't know how to say, coherent, I'm sorry. Um, coherent. Okay, coherent, oh, coherent fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're, they imagine the way you act, the way you um, make clothes, everything have to be coherent. So it's important uh, to present yourself this way. I don't feel uh, to be ready for this. So I didn't, I decided to don't be, uh, to participate on social media as a brand or as a fashion designer. I just makes my personal uh, social and nothing more for the moment. This makes me smile because your creations are so Instagram-y, Instagram worthy, you know? No, but. They are, are so particular. They are so particular. I don't know if this is going to be my way for the future. Am yeah, I supposed I to support? I, I would like to, but in, even in, in the reality, I have to spend a lot of money for these clothes. Is it possible for me to make a brand this way? It's something that I really want to study. The yeah, yeah, the, the roots of the business yeah. before going to the world. Yeah, I get that. That's very interesting. I'm going to switch to another question, except if you, any of you guys want to say something yet? Yeah. Noha? Noha? Uh, okay. Yes, hi. Joanna, you're, uh, you're leading. I don't... Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, because you didn't see me with my hand earlier, so I'm, I'm just going, I'm taking the... <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, well, I think uh, image is... Uh, Sorry for my English, first of all. Uh, I think uh, image is important for uh, my inspiration, but uh, the most important is for me the need. Um, personally, I, uh, my inspiration is the need of, uh, of people I know. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm starting uh, my, uh, um, my fashion brand, so I'm... Um, you started. She just started, yeah. Yes, so um, I, I feel like the need is more important for the people. Like, I don't know, uh, I know uh, I know a lot of girls or, or even boys that uh, need, uh, need uh, many pockets in their, uh, their uh, clothes. So, uh, uh, that inspires me uh, to create uh, uh, clothes that, that have many pockets. This is why, what inspires me uh, more than uh, image. But image is important because uh, people uh, are, um, they saw uh, clothes and they, they like it. So uh, that, that's what uh, they want to wear. 
that's my opinion. I think that's great. I think I think most brands, a lot of brands I like personally are like you targeting the needs. You know, seeing like oh, you know, especially from women because it's always a big rage about what woman what a woman truly wants. Does she want to look sexy or does she want to have uh, you know pockets in her dress? And I think now we. <laughs> We know the answer is kind of both and it depends on the woman, depends on the moment. And I think it's very charming and also smart that you look, you know, around and see, okay, now what do people want? Because that's the, the best way to guarantee you're going to sell and please. So that's very nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So. I think Wasim, sorry if I step in, I think Wasim was trying to... Yes, I really want to add a small information. <laughs> I think that yes. we started creating clothes all because it's uh, it's forcible, it's, it's a need and will always be a need. But uh, now we all care more about the aesthetic, about more uh, being seen. Like uh, we are more into creating some, you know, uh, some pieces that are really... You, they have no use sometimes. It's just about having a piece that makes us more unique, having more uh, the touch of style or uh, I'm wearing this this piece from this brand because it means the, this thing. It's more about, it's, it's now it's not only uh, about the need because if it's, it, if it was all, uh, if it will stay always about the need, we will not push ourselves to make like more pieces to uh, for the aesthetic, uh, aesthetic, and for getting more attention. I think uh, starting my brand, it was uh, always about being uh, ecologic and uh, trying to make uh, clothes from re reusable materials or make making products that can be used in two or even more other ways but it was always uh, i was always like drawing and designing clothes trying to get the attention of the people who are going to wear these pieces it's it's it was always useful or multifunction but it was always a piece that um, that that cuts the eye of uh, the people around that i can like sell more and uh, spend and spread my message more uh, with this, uh, with the with the pieces that I'm creating, was this clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It's very interesting because we're kind of uh, getting back to the first, uh, you know, to Fabiana when she was asking, uh, and then Luca said about the real. I was thinking, you know, fashion maybe is gonna like be a bit torn uh, between the people that want the actual object. Yeah, touch it and feel it and the clothing and and the people um, that are more digital driven that you know think well think they they, they have the right to think that fashion is uh, like you say to direct attention to make people pretty to make people interesting and that you can mm -hmm. do with a simple filter on your face or with a clothing filter you know it, yeah. you don't see people that much with the COVID situation why would fashion stay something that you sew that you you know it would just be an idea it would just be colors it would just be the, the whole visual stuff mm. um and i think some couturier in their minds you know people uh are gonna really miss the you know the, the, the thing that keeps you warm that is soft or mm -hmm. that it's not that is that type of stuff but i get what you're saying and you're 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 a kid i mean so uh, you have you have grown up with uh, this uh, this type of fashion and this type of image also, and this is I think this is going to be m more and more important in the years to come. Yeah, but I think the the idea about relating the technology uh, story with the pandemic is not uh, real because since like since, since a while, since four or five years, all brands are trying to to go more uh, to technology and being more digital and being seen on the internet because it's really a good way to uh, spread fashion all over the world and being seen all over the world. And this is like the the most important, uh, the, the, this is the goal of uh, any brand, I think. Even us, like, uh, as a young designer, uh, designing our, drawing our idea, trying to, to spread the new uh, intellectual uh, ideas 
or movement, as I say always. But it's it, it's always like the most important important thing is to be seen because we, if you are not uh, seen by the uh, by the world, it's there is no way to to succeed or to or to attempt the uh, the 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 our goal. I don't. Yeah. That's good. I heard a voice. No, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next. Uh, well, to another question, just to to keep this interesting. And um, um, I'm gonna ask. Actually, I have a few questions here. I'm gonna ask the one that um, speaks to me more as a photographer because I, I keep asking myself that question: What goes on into designers' minds, and especially young designers who? not necessarily have the budget, not necessarily have the proper skills and stuff like that. So the question is, do you find uh, creating images that suit uh, your, your brand identity or, or if it's the same, your identity, uh, do you find it difficult? And uh, if so, why? What are the main the difficulties that you have creating images that you really like, that you feel are really your brand. I'm talking video, photos, anything. Go. Yes. Who was first? Uh, Wasim, I think. Uh, yeah, you want to answer? So I think re, uh, really releasing my uh, collection was something that I really had no difficult doing it because it was always uh, what I think about this material, what I think about this prints, what I think is is good for uh, this piece. It was always like that. Excuse then uh, me. Excuse going me. to I th thinking. I think I think I miss uh, or I, I did, it wasn't clear actually. Um, mm -hmm. I'm speaking about images, like a lookbook, like a campaign, yeah, like yeah. a video. Exactly. I'm going to the. I'm oh, going to this. Okay, I thought you you meant. Okay, I thought. It was a small introduction. So Go ahead. Uh, and then <laughs> so, uh, collaborating uh, with the models and the photograph to make the the whole shoot or the the picture that everyone is going to see because you have to to present your work in a nice photo shoot which will be seen with other people. So I never imagined that my photo shoot is going to turn to turn this way because I, I had a vision about for the for the result of the photos. But due to some reasons and I had to collaborate with my photograph to know more about the lighting, the uh, posing and all other things that helps me to to have a, a Another idea, another vision about the result that I'm going to have, and I, uh, I ended up having a totally something that I never was expecting to to have. If you get what I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what do you think? Um, I mean, it, was it the communication between you and the? I I think that the communication with one my. Of the best shootings, one of the best campaign I've seen in Tunisia for a while. <laughs> I mean. <Thank> <laughs> Yeah, he collaborated with a friend of mine, and they made beautiful images. You should look uh, look them exactly. up. Exactly, he's a really nice photographer, and he was like working with me. It's like his his uh, his it's it was like his own collection for for luck. He was like giving me the best advices to to get this uh, amazing results. But I never was. I, I had no knowledge in uh, photography and lighting and stuff like this. You the whole aesthetic. So I think the communication was really good, and this uh, this exchange uh, with the with the, the photograph uh, helped me to know more and more, and uh, and and to to know the importance of the uh, the aesthetic more than the because I was all, I thought that the photographer will just take take some picture for for my work and it will look nice because it's my work, you know, but it's not like this. It doesn't work like this. There, there is some photographer or. Uh, some people who can put like your work and give it the the value the value that it needs. So I think that this is a big part of the of the whole work is the the photo shoot and the way you will present your uh, your work uh, in in these photos or small video that that it will help you to to do your campaign and to get into your clients or buyer. Great, thank you. 
Francesca and then uh, uh, Noha, I think, wanted to join. I just want to say that for me it was the most difficult thing because uh, my collection talks about uh, a personal journey. So when I did it, uh, when I did the video, when I did the shoot, the shooting, I, I always think uh, when someone so, uh, see it, uh, if uh, the journey is clear, if uh, what the feeling I was feeling, I was feeling when I decided to start uh, designing this collection was clear. For example, mm, the social distancing, distancing is something that I feel uh, as a need before the pandemic and it's something that I want to um, bring up with with this collection and um, it's a difficult for me in a photo think uh, to explain all the feelings that I put in this designing so I hope uh, that uh, taking the photo shoot in um, Lambrate or uh, Suburno, Milan, make the extraneating uh, feeling that uh, it's um, the, I don't know how to say, feel rouge of the collection. I don't know if it's clear what I, what I mean. Yeah, like the, the, the pinot rouge. <laughs> the, the, okay, I get it. I think I think everybody gets it. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, especially when you know designers' work is very personal like that. Sometimes you don't even want to say it to the photographer. <laughs> you don't know the guy, but you have to somehow express what you mean by it to to get and and even then you're not certain to have the proper image because it's always an interpretation of your work, but. Um, yeah, and is, is production for young designers like you easy? Uh, do you find, you know, uh, cheap photographers that you still like or that would do it for free? I'm, I'm guessing that most of you have, uh, you know, like uh, artistic, uh, you know, uh, artist friends or stuff like that. But how, how does it work? Do you, or do you always tell yourself, yeah, I have to live a budget for that? Uh -huh. Very I did it uh, immediately after the lockdown. So I called a friend of mine, which is a photographer, and uh, truly uh, talk about uh, my inspiration, the way I feel about it. And together we try to recreate the home outside, uh, the feeling that I felt uh, while I was uh, designing my collection. And this, it was everything in one day um, with uh, 800 kilometers of a street between me and Milan. So it's something that uh, it was uh, really, I don't know how to say, um, important to me. And um, I don't know, say immediately. We have to do it in a short time, in a period of after lockdown, which it was, it, that was really, I don't know how to say, uh, um, Expaniating because uh, we haven't seen a lot of people for a long time. Then we care all the, carry all these uh, clothes uh, with the models, the photographer, the makeup artist. Uh, it was strange, honestly. But uh, at the end, I really like oh, really? love. Yeah, you can feel the surreal vibe in the, in yeah, the video, um, and not only from the clothes, uh, from from the whole thing. I I really loved it. I love most of your videos and work but um this one i really remember because maybe the feelings you were trying to express through the collection i kind of get you know this um, like you said social distancing faces in the crowd the, um yeah it, it was a great job it, it didn't shout big production at no. all but with the big production look of the, <laughs> the clothes i think it worked very well it was a clashing <laughs> flashing stuff uh, I just want to make sure if I uh, get the question uh, you were asking if, um, if there's problem uh, when we are shooting or with the, or with the materials or, or uh, if we do uh, uh, if we do a, a campaign or a video and uh, I don't know um, it will be a, a, pro a problem I don't know if I get it um my question is more like what 
difficulties do you find when you try to make images? Manaj, can I say that in Arabic? Yes. <laughs> Please. Manaj, when you make shooting or you make video, what are the things that you make? Manaj, you choose how, or what are the things that you make? What are the budget? Or ولا نجم تقول لي زيد تو با بيان معناها انا فرحانه بلي شوتيك نتاعي فرحان بالفيديوهات تكنيكمون معناها مش في اي حاجه اي حاجه نجم نحكي بدوسي يو كان تراي انا غا تراي تو ترانسليت بس سام تايمز اوكي ميبي ويل لاتلي اي هاف فريندز هو هيلب مي نوت ويز ذيس فيديو بيكوز This video I, I did it with my iPhone, but uh, with other videos and photos, uh, no, uh, I'm lucky I have uh, my friends. But I think the concept of the videos uh, I want to do is, will be a problem uh, uh, with the society. I don't know. Um, I imagine, uh, imagine videos. I don't know. Uh, it uh, will be um, uh, with... I, I want to I want to do videos with the LGBT commu community. Uh, I want to do uh, videos with uh, smokers, but I think it will be a problem uh, with the society, with the the point, uh, the, the uh, their uh, op opinion. It will be a problem, but uh, technically no. Yeah, so it's more about uh, the the actual contents, like Idea, yes. I said, than the. You don't you don't really care about how the the image looks like, but you want to you have a message that you want to spread. Yes, uh, no, I care about the the image, uh, of course, but uh, I wanna I wanna I wanna do uh, videos with message, but I'm concerned about uh, the people, uh, not the people opinion, but the problem that will uh, maybe it will uh, be there when I do uh, this kind of videos, maybe. That's the only problem I uh, I'm thinking about. Yeah, I totally get that. This is um, yeah. Does somebody have questions about that? <laughs> about the censorship in Tunisia? <laughs> Let's not go there. Well, I really hope that the this younger generation um, here in the, in this country will be able to be uh, the most creative possible you know without um, this is what we all wish and i think you know yeah things are changing things are changing i, I can see around uh, even what you guys do uh, my generation well i'm not that old you know i'm not much older than you but when i was your age we wouldn't have done that probably or except if you were a rich kid and you know you knew the family and stuff like that you would be safe you would be uh, doing whatever you want but um so you know and, and time is accelerating in a way gaia where are we tell me if i'm being too too long no it's uh, it's really interesting uh, even talking about censorship would be interesting but i think would be completely <laughs> take away <laughs> would take us really in on to a complete and uh, other direction i think we need to wrap up this uh, session i'm so sorry because uh, yeah <laughs> It it's was uh, really interesting. Thank you so much. <laughs> to you. And uh, I would like now to move to Duccio Basio. Here I am. We will uh, talk about sustainability, the big word that now we hear so much. <laughs> I think, go ahead. <laughs> Leave you the floor. Yes. So, uh, guys, I go straight to the, um, to the questions. So, I would like to know what does uh, sustainability mean to you? and how important is sustainability in your collection so i i forgot the voice of luca are you there can yeah, you yeah, yeah. you want to start yeah yeah um i think that sustainability is a uh, stay for future for me i think that we can consider the present without seeing the future and i think that uh, the sustainability is the biggest word uh, the big uh, the biggest opportunity and is the biggest uh, ethical choice that we can uh, decide to take for our as designers because i think that designer is a very important role we have the responsibility to dress the society we have the responsibility to communicate with just a, a cloth or a, um, a bag a shoes 
everything that uh, we create, um, it's in, yeah, we have a um, sort of responsibility to express uh, a social um, message. And I think that the sustainability is the most important social message to spread in this moment. I think that before the pandemic outbreak and the coronavirus and everything else, I think that uh, we can, we, um, I always watching the uh, television, I listen to the problem of the, um, the plastic in the water, for example, or the deforestation of these, all these big uh, problems of the contemporary humanity, but so many people think that uh, sustainability is not only a responsibility or an ethical choice, it's just like a trend. And I think that in this particular moment, we, uh, in the fashion industry and in the fashion system, we can say that uh, sustainability is a trend. Is um ethical trend or, um, um, yes, it's an ethical trend. Is another is our choice to decide to be part of the future, and we, and uh, if we want to be part of the fashion, we have to choose to be sustainability, to be respectful of everything that is around you, not people. Yes, also people, but uh, first of all, the planet. The um, where uh, where. Um, and I think that for designers, the planet is very, very important because uh, the inspiration of so many people, for so many designers uh, like me came from the nature. For example, in my video, I talk expressly uh, about uh, the continuous growing of the, of the level of the water and uh, so many um, things, things that is just a moment, uh, it's just a... Uh, a, pe a period or don't consider this uh, situation so, so difficult. Uh, and uh, I think that, uh, yes, uh, sustainability is a choice, is a responsibility, is a choice to take. Um, and this also is the biggest choice that a designer can do right now. Great, very clear. What's, what is your opinion, Noah, about that? Uh, personally, I'm into slow fashion industry. Uh, I'm uh, I'm against against the the fast fashion. Uh, it's uh, it's hate. It, it's creating a, a bad effect in the environment and even the people. Uh, it might be easier, but I um, uh, I think. Um, you can, you can, if there is something that you can say in French, it's fine. Okay, thank you. But I think um, it's, it's hard for now or for, uh, personally for me to, uh, to shop like uh, the les tissus. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Les tissus, uh, le, uh, uh, fabrics. 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 Uh, the fabrics that uh, that are uh, recycled. Uh, I think it's it's uh, it's it's a little bit hard for me personally, but um, for for uh, for uh, the for clothes, uh, I personally should, uh, choose uh, not to buy from uh, the fast fashion uh, brands. Uh, just uh, the problem uh, with me uh, is uh, like where I can find uh, fabrics that are recycled here in Tunisia. Um, so um, that's all. Yes, yes, I understand. I understand. Thank you. I think, I think, and I want to extend this, the question also to the other guys that. For a young designer, it's not easy um, to be sustainable, probably. Not so easy. What do you think, uh, Francesca? I think um, that is really an important thing because uh, sustainability is a choice, first of all. And um, even a must. Yeah, a must because uh, 
we have the opportunity to change. We are maybe the last generation that can do it. So, um, for example, in my collection, I decided to take um, velvet of um, recycled um, polyester. And um, I think that maybe the slowdown of the pandemic uh, give us the opportunity to, to focus on the research. We have to make a more, a more, a more sustainable choice on uh, uh, biodegradable fa uh, fabrics uh, or something. We have to put a focus on the cycle of the clothes, for example. And uh, mm, we have to move this way because uh, in, the, in this direction we are now going, we all know the earth is not going to live uh, forever. So it's a, a must for us to make this choice. Okay. And um, which are the main challenges that you are facing to, crea to create and produce a sustain sustainable collection? For example, I am really lucky because uh, here in my city there is this um, industry that make uh, uh, fabrics from uh, recycled polyester and uh, I decided to take all the fabrics uh, in, uh, in, my, um, in my city. So, mm -hmm. for example, I didn't want to buy online, even if it's uh, uh, cheaper. I decided to, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, zero kilometer uh, zero. fashion. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I, for, um, for the moment, uh, for example, the um, uh, coat, the, the inside of the coat is also in a um, polyester, recycled polyester. So it's something that it's difficult because it's expensive, honestly. Yeah. And um, I hope uh, the research is gonna give us the opportunity to have a more inexpensive uh, choice, for example. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Wasim? Um, hello. I think this is like the main idea of my collection, like being uh, sustainable or making like durable. And uh, uh, I think that this is a responsibility, a responsibility that we should all uh, take it seriously. I I made a whole con a collection uh, from uh, uh, the materials which are recyclable or which are res uh, made uh, with recycled recycled material i had i was living in tunis and it was really a difficult uh, experience to find this kind of uh, materials but uh, i was visiting uh, manufacturing manufacturers in in all kind to try to get the uh, uh, material that they they are uh, going to throw or they are going to to use for to just to throw somewhere or to burn to make uh, other pieces. Uh, I made uh, sunglasses using uh, uh, the materials that some uh, manufacturers are going to throw. But I I, I really agree with uh, Francesca and Noha about the difficulty difficulty of getting this kind of materials. But if you if you take this uh, this subject seriously, you will fa you will always find a way to. To, re to release your pieces with uh, uh, trying to damage less the, our planet and the nature. I was filling uh, coats with uh, polyesterine balls, the small white ones, the whole coat, I, it was really difficult. Even sewing, it was like something that I never imagined my, myself doing. But finally I succeeded, uh, succeeded and I started spreading this message. Even I was in Esmo Tunis, and, and uh, I was talking about this idea to all my classmates and all the people in the um, on the school trying to change the idea about just using uh, the material that that uh, will give us the result we want. No, we should also think about the planet where we are living, because we are going too too far with the the idea about just having the the aesthetic that we need using anything or and. We just don't care about the the plant, which is the the main responsibility, I think, in all the um, domains. So uh, this is this is uh, this is my idea. So this is like the the concept that I started with to 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 create my <clears throat> my collection. So I think this everyone should think about this uh, first first of 
before everything else. And uh, I was always reading on the internet and I saw like uh, people are doing too many research to, to make new materials or materials from d'autres matières primo. I think that this is like the, the future of fashion and we should all think this way. And now I start seeing that uh, uh, even big uh, brands getting uh, like uh, because of uh, how they treat fashion. So now everyone is getting scared about uh, acting in a non-responsible way. Tough. Yes. Thank you. Um, Luca, did you have problems uh, to do your collection uh, in order to be, um, to be sustainable? Luca? Can you repeat the question? Because uh, there was. Uh, I'm question. sorry. I'm sorry. No, my question is uh, con um, considering what the, our uh, Tunisian friend said, uh, I think that for them it's much more difficult to find, yeah. uh, to find sustainable fabrics and to be really sustainable. Uh, and I would like to know if you had problems. Yes, I had problems to, to find um, so, um, ecological materials because uh, it's not easy also in room, for example, where I came from, where I am right now. And I think that uh, it's very sad because, um, um, for example, when I go to some shop to to do sh material shopping for my collections, I... Um, always uh, listening to when I ask uh, there is something uh, to um, ecological uh, also to, to respect the planet everything they say uh, they laugh for example they say <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah and um, one time for example um, a person of this uh, kind of shops uh, told me um, uh, the, the designers are all so strange uh, because I only asked for a simple uh, fabrics uh, respectful for the planet. And yes, I think that uh, for the, um, I am advantaged because uh, in Italy there are different um, places where you can find uh, um, the best uh, ecological materials. Uh, for example, uh, Francesca said that um, in Milan there are different places and uh, for my thesis project I did uh, a research for you know, of these kind of materials in Milan and I found different places where to, where to shop these uh, materials. But I can say that yes, in Italy it's more easy it's easier that uh, in other part, place like Tunisia or, for yeah. example, yes, India. yes. I think I think that what what you said uh, is really interesting. Is probably um, important to find how young designer can be helped in order to achieve uh, sustainable collections uh, because we are talking about fabrics but i think globally speaking that uh, to be sustainable it costs money yeah need money you need organization you need research you need everything so yeah so it's quite complicated in this in this moment for young designer and not only but for young designers especially that have not big budget uh, to be sustainable. Uh, I think that we have a lot of things to tell, but I will stop here just to give the place also to, the, to Denise that comes after me. And I think also that the time that we have, that we dispose is going to, to finish. Gaia, are you there? Yes. I thank you so much. Denise, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. She's going to lead a conversation now about uh, working in fashion, challenges and opportunities. <laughs> That's a big thing. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I will be very, very fast. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to start with a statement that could be a kind of provocation. Uh, we say that young designers have only one certitude, that is not having any certitude. So I'd like to, to hear from you, uh, what do you think about this statement? Uh, I'd like to hear your, your, your experience about this. It's really, it, it's, it's real that a young designer has any certitude. And if yes, tell us uh, your experience. I think in, uh, I, I mean, in uh, investing in self in the, in the fashion world. So, just anybody's know, interesting, possibly. maybe um, this question is more after you, you train, what, I mean, what is your experience yeah. after, you know, you went to school or if you didn't go to school, or what are your main challenges to really work in fashion and what meant to you? What did you do to be able to work as a fashion designer? Yes, in fact, my, my second question, uh, was about the, the the trainings. So, do you think that uh, training are ready to accept the changes, the changes provoked by the COVID uh, emergency? So, do you think that are radical changes taking place that put the e-fashion and the new digital business model in the center of the of the, of the trainings? And if you can really uh, have an advance uh, from the webinar and seminars about the fashion and new technologies to promote fashion. Uh, do you think that it's a real tool to you to enter in the business world? So, yeah, three questions in one. Your, your challenges? to become fashion designer and uh, if you think that in your training uh, uh, the e-fashion uh, everything is, has to deal with the technology and uh, di the digital dimension uh, is uh, really an important part uh, of a training that a fashion designer today should uh, follow and if you believe that uh, all these e-training trainings on internet that are coming up about fashion are useful or it's just a new way of marketing uh, fashion uh, courses. You made the perfect recap. Yeah, I was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so can What's I... In? Yeah. Okay. So I think I, as a young designer and now in this time, like we don't have... Uh, the right to complain about too many things because now it's i think it's still we have too many difficulties but it's still uh, it's too many times easier because we have like we can see all what's happening in uh, in the world and we have like a big a big uh, advance of, uh, about the fashion world and what's ha happening even starting in a new brand counting on the the online and the the technology to to start a new brand is really a good way and i think it's um, the amazing way, the best way for us as young designer to start. We don't need like physical uh, sell points, or if I can say, or we don't need. We just can have an Instagram account, a good shooting, or good photo, and really nice garment, and a good idea to to show to the world and start start from uh, your small apartment or place to to go uh, to the world, and you also have the idea to be in. Uh, Good contest like the, the uh, this one, the, which uh, allows us to meet new people and try to talk more about our, our work, uh, our work, and try to show the idea that we want to to show to the world. I think that the as a young designer, there is always some small difficulties to difficulties to that you will uh, you will face. Even as a bigger brand, there is so many difficulties that you will face. Uh, it is always difficult to, to face, but you, the way you you take this difficulty, difficult, difficult, see, difficulty, see and the way you you try to find a, a solution to, to 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 and never, ne jamais être désespéré. You should always continue and try to find the solution. Talking about the uh, well, 
like I was talking about the material, we, it's so difficult to to make uh, uh, sustainable materials or, or something like this, but you can use uh, other material that was already used and it's, it, it could be included in the in the same idea. You should always find the the way or the solution to continue to just to have the the best uh, result with the the uh, tools that you you have uh, by your hand. About the technology and the e-fashion, I think it's like the the best thing that uh, could happen to a young fashion designer to start selling and st start showing his work. Uh, with uh, really no no money need or no budget need, I think. So. And according to your experience, do you think that the 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 I mean the class that you have uh, and that you had in the specialized center of for the designer, mm -hmm. do you think that your experience uh, could be useful to face the changes in the fashion industry and? Uh, I mean, you you take advantage from this. The 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 training is adequate to the situation. To the new situation is adequate. I think that the school is good to learn more about technical about fashion, like making pattern or having idea about uh, the technical uh, things. But I think that I learned more uh, doing some internship, being in like really. Um, work uh, workshops or atelier that showed me too many new things i was never expecting that it would be that different i think but i think also that the um, the the responsibility of school is to show us more the how to make the garment and not how to face these difficulties but they are always telling us try to show us some examples or put us in some like competition even uh, in school to show us that, that that we are going to face some difficulties and we we should fa uh, f find the way to to manage this uh, this kind of uh, problem so but yes there it's so different like being in school and being in working in real life it's so much different i think yeah anyone else i can Thank you. Yeah, Luca and uh, Francesco. I don't know who the first. Who is the first? Luca was before, I think. Okay. <laughs> I think that is very important uh, what um, what Sim said because um, at school uh, every teacher, every educator said that you have to keep uh, uh, your aesthetic, or your idea, because your idea will be the push to go up to arrive wherever you want but when you arrive in um how, i don't know how style office so official style in uh, in english i don't know if it's the good uh, the translation but i think uh, that when when i am arrived in a um, style office of a maison they told me they said me to forget everything about me I have to absorb. Um, I have to be the extension of the brand of, uh, for where I'm working, and uh, I think this is uh, the part that uh, is unseen at school. No one at school said you have to be able to absorb another aesthetic uh, outside. But when you arrive in our office, the first thing that you say, I don't. That, uh, for example, said to me. I don't, I am not interested in you. I am interested in what you can do. And I think that we have a passion. We are just, um, how can I say, um, machine and, on the, and uh, sometimes we forget to be people. And this is, and for me, it's the biggest challenge because uh, in the office, uh, I am just, uh, an extension of the brand. My, when I am at home and I work on my collection, I have to re, um, recap all my ideas uh, and it's And look at things out. <laughs> yes, and I have to refine myself. <laughs> it's just this, Dishan. I can say that this is the biggest challenge that I prove on myself. Okay, thank you. Francesca. Honestly, I'm uh, really, really lucky about this situation because uh, I'm actually working uh, 
in a, with a businesswoman as Alberta Ferretti that give us the opportunity to express ourselves. And she, from the day one, she told me, okay, this is the, the, the first uh, uh, imp imprinting of the collection, then uh, do what you feel. And uh, it's something that really um, teach me since the day one uh, that you have to face uh, with the, um, I don't know how to say, mercato, the um, market. The market, I'm sorry. The market, because, uh, okay, every uh, single thing is possible, it has a cost, uh, then you have to feel if. Uh, where you're gonna sell it. Uh, so uh, everything is studied. It's a really big uh, word. It's not only designing, it's uh, selling, it's communication, it's everything, everything. And everything is connected in the design that you're, that you're working on. And uh, I think it's an incredible school to me. And um, my challenge for the future is I think to have uh, a, my own brand. But now I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So honestly, I don't feel the COVID situation. I don't know how to say because since uh, my graduation, I start to work and uh, I'm actually working. So I'm really, really lucky about. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I think we can, we can stop here, Gaia. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much, uh, much time. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we are. Um, I think we exceeded largely <laughs> the time that we are at our um, disposal, but it was super, super interesting. I thank you so much for joining us uh, today. It was really. Um, I think we should learn from you, actually. <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, we are all hearing. Uh, um, uh, we. We are, I think some of us already are thinking about possible actions that can be inspired by your suggestions and by your practice. And uh, stay in touch with us because um, you can help institutions and also projects, cultural projects, to really deliver something which is really needed um, for you and uh, also you know, for a future public and uh, that is following us. Thank you so much, and um, I you. close now. I would like to close now this session and say goodbye to all of you. Thank you, Maria Vittoria Longhi. I don't know if you have a question for for them. It's okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you to all the speakers and to all of you, and uh, have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank, you, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we are, we are not live anymore. Thank you really. Thank you very much for your time. It was really, really nice to meet you in person or in e-person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity, by the way. I'm really glad to be part of this uh, experience and I hope you, that one day I will meet you in real life. And this is what, it was really a pleasure to, to be part of in this uh, experience. Yeah, well, for us so. as well. Your videos yes. are amazing. I have uh, to tell you, oh, I was just, uh, well, Joanna and Duccio and uh, I were, you know, involved in the selection process. It was really, really tough because we had really nice videos, but uh, yeah, you, you did an amazing job. I think, you know, you should deserve really to be <laughs> broadcasted. <laughs> I confirm, I confirm. And uh, I think that um, this, uh, this kind of relationship that we have uh, must continue yeah. because probably uh, we have uh, something, I use the, the word teach to you, but it's not what I mean. Uh, uh, but we have many things to know from you then you can teach us so many things. And I think that putting these two things together, uh, we can have a um, very important result. Non so se sono stato chiaro. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, je ne sais pas si j'étais assez clair. Mais je pense que c'est un discours qui doit continuer, un discours qui doit continuer absolument, parce que ce sont 
ci sono delle cose che noi sappiamo e che vi possiamo dire dovute all'esperienza e adesso con se e con peu qui peut vous aider a continuare il vostro lavoro ma il y a aussi énormément de choses e ci sono anche molte cose che dobbiamo, dobbiamo sapere da voi e quando apprendere da voi anyway è stato bello thank yeah. you yeah. thank you thank you ciao ciao a tutti ciao Ciao. Goodbye. Ciao. Ciao.